Hey everybody, it's Chris for All Ears TV and All Ears Net. Today, we are going to look inside your mind. We're going to take what you know and literally turn it upside down. Oh, and and we're going to make it smell bad. So sit back and relax as we bring you some secrets, some tips, and lots of brain tweaks as All Ears rides the journey into imagination. With figment. Oh, sorry. Yes, with figment. The Imagination Pavilion has been a part of Epcot since it opened. As we've mentioned in other videos, Epcot's original mission was to be a total departure from the traditional theme park, and Future World in particular was focused almost totally on science and education. The central theme of the Imagination Pavilion is all about using or stretching your imagination. It begins on the outside as you approach the building with the upside down waterfall. The Imagination Pavilion is also home to the Magic Eye Theater, which was the previous home to Michael Jackson's Captain EO and Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. It currently shows an excellent collection of Pixar shorts. There's also the Image Works, where kids and adults can play with fun, hands-on experiments, and of course, Journey into Imagination. With Figment. Thank you, with Figment. The ride is a whimsical look at how our senses play a part in our imagination with Dr. Niall Channing, wonderfully played by Monty Python's Eric Idle, and a cute purple dragon named Figment. Figment as our guides. The best part of this ride is that unless the Magic Eye Theater has just let out, there is generally no wait at all. Wander through the queue and you'll see parts of the Imagination Institute. There's a portrait gallery of Inventor of the Year winners, which includes Dr. Channing, Dr. Wayne Selinsky, that's Rick Moranis from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and Dr. Brainerd, the much-missed Robin Williams. The ride went through a refurbishment in 1999, and the public opinion of the new version was mostly negative. The Figment character was reduced to simple cameos, and the ride track was severely shortened due to budgetary reasons. And they changed the name to Journey Into Your Imagination. And, well, the people spoke, and the ride shut down just two years later to become the current iteration. The colors become much brighter as you enter the loading and unloading zone. Slow-moving vehicles, similar to those on Spaceship Earth, crawl by as you move from the moving ramp into the vehicle. There are two rows, and both can comfortably seat two adults or two adults and a child. The back row is slightly wider than the front row. Wheelchair accessible vehicles are available. However, chairs that are longer and wider than the average chair may be a tight fit. Though it looks like one, the ride is not an Omnimover ride, and the ride vehicles will stop periodically as part of the show. Once inside the vehicle, you begin your journey to several labs that will study your responses to sight, sound, and smell. You'll never get to taste and touch as Figment, well, he has other plans. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our special drive-through open house. In this first stop, Dr. Channing begins to provide an overview of your open house experience, and it's here you get your first glance at Figment, who kind of has his own idea of what we're doing with this open house. Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the Figment of Imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. There's sight, sound, smell, touch, coochie coochie go, and taste. Taste like chicken. Can I go? Please, please, please. No. I don't want you out of my sight. Out of sight? Okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Figment, you are not to interfere with the tour. Our first stop is the sound lab. We'll begin by testing your hearing with a series of tones. Left ear, right ear. Left, right. What? In the sound area, Figment interrupts this experiment with a brief section of pitch black and loud sounds. This section may be scary for young children, so you might want to prep them a bit. It wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. Now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. For 
The main song you hear throughout is One Little Spark and was written by the Sherman Brothers, who have written many Disney classics and were favorites of Walt Disney himself. Be prepared, it'll get stuck in your head as you'll be humming it as you walk around the park. It's like, it's like Epcot's version of It's a Small World. If you like hunting for hidden Mickeys, you'll notice one right here on the dry erase board. At the time Figment was created, he was one of the first characters to ever be created exclusively for a theme park attraction, and also became the lead spokes character for the entire Epcot park. This sign goes by really fast, and if you haven't seen it before, you can find lots of variations on the internet. This one's a little dark, so this is a variation. It's a great right brain, left brain test, and it's a blast to do with your kids. The test is to say the color of the word, not the word itself. Feel free to pause here and try it, otherwise, eh, it's time to stink up the place. Don't miss this trick magic box where you can see a butterfly dematerialize before your eyes. In the smell section, you're going to get blasted with the smell of skunk, which is actually a burnt coffee smell. Most kids laugh at this, and if not, most parents get a good laugh from their kids being disgusted by the smell. So why is figment purple? When you think of dragons in cartoon form, you probably think of either green or red. When the original attraction opened, it was sponsored by Kodak. The color green was the primary color for Kodak's main competition, Fuji Film. So, Disney Imagineers decided the color purple would be much better as a neutral color choice in regarding any brand interference. Now, right here on the TV, Figment is watching clips of himself that were used in the original attraction from 1982. This is another blackout area that's combined with a huge blast of air that masks the wall falling in the darkness before the big final bright reveal. 
This one made my daughter jump out of her seat. And, okay, I might have laughed. Just, oh, just a little. Figment and One Little Spark were two of the most popular parts of the original attraction, which made it an even more shocking decision to remove them from the second version. And never before has a public opinion caused an attraction to close so quickly after opening. Some people find the moon freaky, like the stuff of nightmares, which are born from our imagination, so I guess it all ties in. After the ride, you arrive in Imageworks, which can be lots of fun, especially if it's not crowded. And it's a good chance to let your kids be kids and play for a bit, run around, jump around, try these experiments before heading back out into the Florida heat. You can also now meet Ralph and Vanellope from Wreck-It Ralph in Imageworks as well. This wall looks so cool and it's probably some kind of complex game, but I don't have a clue what this does. There is a gift shop where you'll find lots of Figment merch. I think you mean like this one? Well, yeah, maybe not as old as this one, but lots of merch nonetheless. Journey into Imagination is quickly becoming one of the last OG rides in Epcot. What are your thoughts on this one? Keep it around for the kids or make room for the next intense thing? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to visit allears.net where you can read reviews or better yet, you can rate and review this ride. Hey, if you like this video, click on that thumbs up. Be sure to stay tuned to All Ears TV and allears.net for more Disney news, fun, and stuff. And follow us on Instagram at All Ears Net. New to the channel? Check out our other ride videos right here. And please subscribe to All Ears Net. Clang that little notification bell so you get notified when we post a new video. This is Chris for All Ears TV. See you next time.